In this Diablo 4 Season 3 guide, I'm going to show you everything you need to know before you start playing the new Diablo 4 Season, Season of the Construct. If you're a player returning after quite some time, perhaps since the launch of Diablo 4 way back in June of last year, rest assured that we'll be covering everything you need to know to best progress the season, including leveling characters, completing the season quest, and the mechanics of the season. So if you aren't caught up and want to get back into Diablo, or maybe you just want to recap on the seasonal updates, then this video is for you. First, let's take a look at the new Diablo 4 seasonal content featuring the Companion, Arcane Tremors, and Nightmare Vaults. Before we get into some leveling tips for returning players or for those looking to reach World Tier 4 as quickly as possible. The season of the Construct revolves around the Loom, an ancient technology designed by the founder of the Rodrum and his companion, a Yuzon. This Loom has been stolen by the demon Malthus, and you must fight against his minions, the Constructs, to get the Loom and defeat him. Gate Hall will be the season's newest hub area, a town center under Kedjistan, which acts as your way of accessing the new seasonal dungeons called Vaults. To help in your journey to defeat Malthus, you'll have a new seasonal central companion, aka the Robot Spider. The Central is a construct that you find during the seasonal quest that is repaired to become your own construct companion. You should acquire the Central as fast as you can, since it's a permanent pet that can deal damage, crowd control, and even heal you, overall being extremely helpful. You can also pet it, so make sure you get it. This companion will level with you as you progress in the game, and it has its own skills for you to build to your liking. These skills can be equipped via tuning and governing stones, which you can get from arcane tremors, vaults, and crafting from shattered stones, which are randomly dropped from constructs at the jeweler and gate hall. They can also be upgraded by finding duplicates or crafting duplicates. You'll have two slots for governing stones, determining what abilities your central can perform, and six slots for tuning stones, which can augment those abilities. Once you get the central, you'll obviously want to start getting those stones, so you should start by clearing arcane tremors that can be found across sanctuary. In these events, you'll need to find cores from constructs or from towers which you have to place in a brazier to summon Malthus's heralds. Defeating these constructs have a low chance of giving you some stones as well as shattered stones, but more importantly, when you defeat the heralds, you get the seasonal rare currency, Pearls of Warding. Pearls of Warding act as a sort of currency for gambling in the new vaults, which can provide you with more governing and tuning stones. After you obtain some Pearls of Warding, you should go and access one of the three vaults from Gate Hall. Once you enter the vault, there will be a statue called the Statue of Zoltan Cool, which allows you to exchange Pearls of Warding for stacks of Zoltan's Warding. These stacks act as a counter for the multiple traps that can be found throughout the vault. Every time you get hit by a trap, you lose one stack of Zoltan's Warding, and if you have zero stacks by the time you complete the dungeon, you won't be able to unlock the special Wardwoven chest which contains good loot and more tuning and governing stones. Additionally, you can turn the vaults into Nightmare Vaults if you want to speed up this whole process. These vaults will have more traps, harder enemies, as well as more wardwoven chests to unlock. Vault sigils to start Nightmare Vaults will drop in the same fashion as normal Nightmare sigils in World Tier 3 and 4. So now you probably get the basic cycle for the season. Do some arcane tremors, get some pearls, go to a vault, clear it without getting hit by traps, put skills on the companion, and repeat. Once you complete the quest line, you'll gain access to a fourth vault called the Uber Vault. In this vault, you'll go against traps and enemies, and at the end fight against Uber Malthus, a stationary boss who can drop you two unique stones which are super strong, so you want to complete this at some point during the season. With the season mechanics out of the way, next let's talk about how you can level up fast in the new season. Depending on whether or not you've completed Diablo 4 before, the first option you get when making a new character for the season is whether you want to skip the campaign and which world tier you'd like to play on. If you have already completed the campaign, skipping it on a new character will be a much faster method of leveling. For the world tier, contrary to what you might think, world tier 1 will be the best for quick leveling. Choosing world tier 2 will provide you with 20% more experience in gold, but in return the enemies are much more challenging and will take you more time to churn through, ultimately making it less efficient than choosing world tier 1 where enemies are a cakewalk and you can clear dungeons much faster. Of course, later on when you get to mid and end game, you will be running world tier 3 and world tier 4 when available as these difficulties generate much more XP. Since there have been no updates to the way experience works at the Season of Constructs launch, the fastest way to level your character will still be half repeating the Domhain Tunnels dungeon in Skaz Glen, but there are still other methods to level including new seasonal activities. After creating your seasonal character and first loading into the game, the first thing you should do is make sure to claim your Renown rewards. If you played in earlier seasons and completed Renown for all the regions via discovering waypoints, clearing strongholds, finding altars of Lilith, etc., you'll be able to claim the bottom rewards for all the regions. This will include two skill points, plus one potion capacity, plus 80 maximum obol capacity, 
and most importantly, plus four Paragon points. If you haven't unlocked these, you don't need to feel rushed to get them as soon as you can, but you will definitely need to find some time to get these rewards later down the road. The very next thing you should do is progress the seasonal quest as much as you can until it's too hard or you get bored so you can obtain the central companion as soon as possible. Once you do that, you can start grinding the Domhain tunnels. The strategy is to clear the first section without releasing any prisoners, teleport out to Karagar, sort your inventory, reset the dungeons via your map, and then go back. You basically repeat this until around level 50 along with the odd Helltide to get necessary resources like Forgotten Souls and Fiend Roses for upgrading your gear. Now if this isn't for you, which I know is the case for a lot of people, there are a bunch of other things you can do to level your character. The best alternative is Legion Events, which spawn quite frequently and will give you a ton of XP upon completion. You'll get an alert on the map before they spawn in, and you should head over there around 5 minutes before it starts to kindle the campfire at the location. Once you interact with it and stand around for a bit, your XP gain for the event will increase by up to 15%, and you can clear the event with other people in the world to get some amazing XP. Other activities can include World Bosses, Tree of Whispers, and the new Seasonal Activities. World Bosses will spawn in every 6-8 to eight hours and are a great source for XP if the server is prepared to kill it. However, I don't recommend doing these in the first week of a new season, as most of the time everyone is simply too weak to take them on, and it just ends up being 15 minutes of your life wasted. Grim Favors are another great way to level with a bunch of diverse quests on the map for you to complete like harvesting a zone, clearing a cellar, or the most XP rich one, clearing a Whisper dungeon. Grim Favors can overlap with world bosses and the new seasonal activities, so be on the lookout for that. The new seasonal activities will consist of arcane tremors, which you can find throughout Sanctuary and the Vault Dungeons. I personally recommend grinding the arcane tremors for leveling, since they can give some XP and the new rare currency. You can mix all these different activities while clearing the Domhain tunnels, or you can just do one or the other depending on what you have the most fun with. Just remember to clear Helltides every once in a while, stock up on elixirs to boost XP gain while doing these activities, and to do the seasonal content as well. At level 15, or 25 for you Necros, you should do your class quest to unlock a special feature for your class. And further down the line, once you feel confident with your build around level 50 to 60, you can attempt the World Tier 3 Capstone Dungeon and Kyovashad to increase your World Tier, which brings us to leveling above level 60. Once you get to World Tier 3, the best use of your time will be coming from Nightmare Dungeons or Nightmare Vaults, which give good rewards and XP. You can get the Nightmare Sigils to activate them as random drops from enemies at this point in the game, and from crafting at the Occultist. To max out the XP you can get from Nightmare Dungeons, you should be fighting enemies 10 levels higher than you, although you can do lower level ones if they are too difficult at first. You can also continue doing the activities from before, though they will be unlikely to progress your character to the same extent since Nightmare Dungeons are the bread and butter of character progression at this level. Once you get to around level 70, you can tempt the World Tier 4 Capstone, and from there you can keep doing Nightmare Dungeons as well as mix in other things like completing the Seasonal Quest if you haven't, completing your Renown, or basically any other activities in the game. So far, that's about everything we have to say on what we think beginners should be doing for Diablo 4's Season 3, Season of the Construct. Later on, there will be an upcoming Gauntlet Dungeon, a weekly rotating fixed dungeon that will have you competing against other players on leaderboards, with top weekly scores earning a permanent spot in the Hall of Ancients. We don't know much about what these dungeons will entail specifically, but if you feel like you're up to the challenge, be on the lookout for this dungeon in the coming weeks or months. So that wraps up our video on the Diablo 4 Season of the Construct, catching you guys up on the new features of the season as well as some good leveling tactics for those of you that haven't played in a while. What do you guys think of this season so far? Does it look interesting? Are you going to check it out? Let us know in the comments below. Ah, welcome, Wanderer. I sense that recent events have brought you to me. These are strange times indeed. Though many fear the inexplicable, I deal in it. And you, you seek answers. This will lead you to the knowledge you desire. Legends state that this rune is the missing piece of an arcane construct. A mighty weapon capable of harnessing ancient power for the one strong enough to control it. But be warned, for the construct is buried deep beneath Kejistan in the ancient vaults of Zoltan Kul. Untouched for centuries, they are protected by deadly traps of Kul's own design. 
and guarded by his mechanical horrors. But the architect Sultan Kul overestimated his cleverness. In his hubris, the mage abandoned his work, leaving darker forces free to corrupt his machinations and claim the Volt's power for themselves. The answers await you in the depths. Take the rune, if you dare.